Hello, my name is Edmond Jamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, today's episode's lecture. Steps in calculating consolidated statements of financial position. We have had extensive discussions on the various segments on the consolidated statement of financial position. So in this episode, we shall be considering the steps involved in easing its preparation. Okay. We we'll commence with group structure. The first thing is to establish the presence of control upon which the preparation of group account hinges on. Now for the purposes of convenience, control exists if an entity, the parent, holds more than 50% of the ordinary shares of another, the subsidiary. Now if the parent does not have absolute control, the residual will be the non-controlling interest. Step 2 will be the net assets of the subsidiary. The objective is to estimate the post-acquisition reserves, that is, the amount of profits to be disbursed to the holding entity or entities. Mind you, Net assets is a total asset less total liabilities, which equals all items in the equity section of the statement of financial position. So you start with ordinary shares, the figure at acquisition, and that's at the end. Normally it's the same. But if they issued more shares post acquisition, the reporting period figure will be different. Then the next one will be share premium, that's at acquisition, that's at the reporting date. Also, it is normally equal. However, if there are changes, it has to be represented at the end of the reporting period. Then you bring retained earnings. This mostly differs because post-acquisition, there has been some transactions going on, either a profit or loss subsequently made. So it will alter the figure. Then you bring fair value adjustment as discussed in the episode with the link above. So the figure was totally omitted. So adjust the figure at acquisition and put the same figure at reporting date. Then lastly, unrealized profit if the subsidiary is the seller. It wasn't done at the date of acquisition, so it is nil. It was done during the period, so it will reflect in the figure at the reporting date. So you have to less it. So then we estimate the total for both columns for the acquisition and the reporting period. So the post acquisition reserves will be the net assets at the reporting date less that at the acquisition. Step three is goodwill at acquisition. So as already discussed, Goodwill is the difference of the consideration meted out by the parent and in certain circles with the non-controlling interest and net assets of the subsidiary at acquisition. In the discussion on goodwill, we had to estimate the fair value of the net assets. But now, with the step 2 here, we just lift the total of the left column and then we fix it here. That will give us the goodwill on consolidation. Step 4 will be non-controlling interest. This is as tackled in the episode on non-controlling interest. So we start with the fair value of the non-controlling interest at acquisition. Then you calculate its share of post-acquisition reserve. So you pick the percentage holding of the non-controlling interest. Then you strike it on the post-acquisition reserve, the one gotten in step two. So the total will give you the figure for non-controlling interest on consolidation. The final step is the group retained earnings. So this is to compute the total earnings of the parent. So we start by capturing the parent's whole retained earnings then we add its share of post acquisition reserve that is also its percentage multiplied on the post acquisition found in step two if the parent sold to the subsidiary in the course of the year and there are some of the goods left there will be unrealized profit so we less it from here so the retained earnings on consolidation will give us the total Kaiser acquired 75 percent of the share capital of zero at its incorporation for forty five thousand dollars the statement of financial position of the entities as at 31st December 2017 are as follows. So we have the non-current assets for both entities. Investment in zero at cost stated here. Inventory, other non-current assets, giving a total asset of 118,000 for Kaiser and 58,000 for zero. We come to the bottom column. Share capital, both stated. Retained earnings, both captured. Current liability, both present. So the total Equity and liability will also be 118,000 for Kaiser K, 58,000 for Zira. Fair value of the non current asset at acquisition was $5,000 more than the current value. So, fair value adjustment is required here. The fair value of the non controlling interest is $15,000. Okay. So, during December 2017, 
Z had sold goods to K for $120,000. So Z sells to K at cost plus of 20%. K had only sold half of these goods. Okay, so a realized profit is also required here. K sells an equipment with a carrying value of $9,000 to Z for $12,000 at the beginning of the year. That equipment has a remaining useful life of three years and it is to be depreciated as so. So we have to prepare a consolidated statement of financial position at 31st December 2017. So we have non current assets a 50,000 for the parent, which is Kaiser, then 25,000 for Zira. Then we add the fair value adjustment of 5,000. Then we less the unrealized profits, give it a figure of 78,000. We are going to give all the workings later, so don't worry. We have goodwill. So step three will give further explanation of twenty thousand dollars. We have inventory thirteen thousand for parent. We less the unrealized profit. Then we add that of zero seventeen thousand, giving twenty thousand dollars. Then we have other current asset ten thousand for K, sixteen thousand for Z, twenty six thousand. A total asset will be one hundred and fourteen thousand. Then when we come to the share capital, we only pick that of Kaiser, the parent. Then we have non controlling interest step four of seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Then we have Retain earnings, step five, which will also come in very soon. $35,500. Then finally bring in the current liabilities, 26000 total. So the final total for the equity and liability column will provide $144,000. So we come to the workings. Unrealized profit for inventory will be $10,000. Because the markup was given and the selling price was also provided, it will be the 20 on 120 times half of the goods, $60,000. When we come to the realized profit pertaining to the equipment, it will be $2,000, which is net book value post disposal. So it will be $8,000. The $12,000 selling price, one year being elapsed, so it will be the two-thirds of it. Then if the asset had not been sold, the net book value would have been $6,000 by now because the current value was $9,000. A year has been used, so the two-thirds will provide $6,000. The difference will give an unrealized profit of $2,000. When we come to the steps, Kaiser hold 75% of zero, so it means that there is control. So because it's not a perfect holding, non-controlling interest will be 25%. Okay. When we come to step two, share capital of zero was 35,000. There was no mention of further issuance, so it will be the same as reporting date. There is no share premium, so it will be blank. We come to retain earnings because they were purchased at its inception. They had not traded, so there was no profit or loss. So it will be zero at acquisition. Then the year end was twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Then we come to fair value adjustment. Nothing was recorded with respect to the adjustment, so we have to record it at the beginning. Then the same figure at the reporting date. And when we come to the realized profit pertaining to the goods sold, because zero was the seller, we have to bring it here. The transaction didn't happen at acquisition, so it is zero. Then we subtract it from the reporting date figure. Totals will be forty thousand for acquisition, fifty thousand for reporting date. So post acquisition reserve will be ten thousand dollars. The difference between the two. When we come to step three, which is goodwill, we'll have the fair value of the cost of investment of parent, which is forty five thousand dollars. Then that of the non controlling interest, fifteen thousand dollars, providing a total of sixty thousand dollars. Then we we'll less it with the fair value of the net asset at acquisition. So the left column of step two was forty thousand dollars. So goodwill on consolidation will be twenty thousand dollars. We come to step four, non controlling interest. Then we have the fair value of the non-controlling interest at acquisition, $15,000. They will bring its share of post-acquisition reserve, which is the 25% of its holding, multiplied by the $10,000 found in step 2, giving $2,500. So non-controlling interest at consolidation will be $17,500. When we come to the final step, which is group retain earnings, we will bring the parent retain earnings of $30,000. Its entitlement in the post-acquisition reserve of zero. 75% of $10,000, $75,000. Unrealized profits relating to the non current asset sold, $2,000. Then total will be $35,500. All too soon, we come to the end of this episode's lecture. I hope it went well. If you have any comment or feedback for us, do well to drop them in the comment section below. Whilst at that, kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications to stay abreast with our postings. Also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. Join us on another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Until then, take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.